Yeah, it's the Friday edition of the Morning Flavor. While we were for the break, I was trying hard to speak with a hardcore voice than, than actually a louder voice, hardcore, more manly than that of the lady I work with on the show here. I think I've made some significant progress. You can hear I sound more manly. Yeah. So within the, the, the course of the weekend, I'm going to be doing a lot of voice training. I want to have a hardcore, husky, rocky coffee voice uh, than that of Mildred Tice. Welcome aboard, everyone uh, watching on Free to Air today. Welcome back. Uh, we had a little bit of a technical hitch uh, here and there. But we're back and rolling. And as always, the morning flavor runs from 7 to 10, Monday to Friday, uh, the 4... Uh, yeah, I almost forgot the lady. Yeah, the, the three gentlemen and the lady always here. And it's time to focus on our discussion of the day. And I'm holding in my hands uh, a book, uh, Famous Quotations by uh, Jagger and uh, Huntington. A very interesting uh, quote in the book here. I have learned that the best classroom in the world is at the feet of an elderly person. Okay, I really need to do that again. I have learned that the best classroom in the world is at the feet of an elderly person. It's a quote from Andy Rooney. And this book contains numerous quotations and letters uh, by famous leaders, people who have made some of the most famous quotes in the world. And the author of this book is a student of Macquarie University, a student of Arts in Economics, Bachelor of Arts in Economics, and he has written three editions of the famous quotations. We'll be talking about his writing experience. We'll be talking about his uh, inspiration, what makes him tick, and how he's managed to balance all that. Welcome to The Morning Flavor once again. Oh, thank you. All right. Uh, l l let's start off fr from the basics. Um, you are a student uh, at university, mm, and yes. uh, most times life is about... Uh, studying and having fun. How have you managed to balance uh, your uh, responsibilities as a student, uh, the desire to have fun, and the time to write books? Um, first and foremost, I'm greatly profound and exceedingly humbled to be here for my third time. Um, um, when I, I joined the university, I had already put one book on the market. Um, that was famous quotation, first edition. But that book, I did it um, from my senior one up to my senior six during the holidays. Okay. And when I reached in my vacation, I, I felt I needed to put a book on the market. But still, I, I needed to recognize some institution where I, maybe I was attending to. That's when I would do, release it. So I was forced to hold the book until when I would go to the admission of my career university because I wanted at least to to include my profile of where I was studying at that time. Okay. So in my vacation, uh, in my first week at the university, I published my first book, Famous Quotation. Uh, the second book I did, uh, the one I released uh, in May year two, that book I've already, uh, I, I do the studies during the week, uh, the semester, then off semester, that's when I would have time to to, to write my own personal kind of book, books. Okay. A senior one is, uh, that, that's an age, that's a bit, that's teenage, right? Uh, just entering adolescence. Where did you draw from <laughs> your inspiration to write? Um, when I was in senior one, I had a dream. I had a dream that I must write a book in my third year at the university. But this dream, I see it has come to be a reality before the unexpected time. For me personally, it gives me confidence that maybe even if I die today, it's not the end of me. My soul will move on from generation to another through my writings. You know, when uh, I joined one of the top schools in this country for my A-Revo, I was worried how I would keep myself in such a prestigious institution to, due to my humble background. So I decided to join the prayer band and maybe think I'm going to find a friend or somebody to encourage me. But I realized that most of those people in the prayer band, most of them were more worried than I was. <laughs> so I asked myself, what can I do for them? Like Sister Jessica told us of her story of how her dad became mad in senior three. Somebody used to bring me at home, somebody used to pay her school fees, somebody became mad. So I asked myself, how can I be able to reach these people who are more worried than I was? I decided to present three quotations at the school assembly every Friday. But that was not enough. I published my first book in the first week because I wanted to reach to other people. The world is on a spin, natural catastrophes, economic meltdown, sugar has become a story to be discussed about. And people do search for answers, such kind of situations. This mm -hmm. is the very reason why we have turned to the minds of the wise men and find out what they say about such kind of situations and how, do we are how are they able to overcome this kind of situation. That's where I got the inspiration of writing, wanting to reach to those people who are more worried than I was. 
Okay. Um, maybe before before you zero down on uh, putting together famous quotations, there, there are millions of them out there. How did you zero down on the personalities that you would quote in your book? Um, it is a must for me that every weekend I go to church. Every I, every weekend I have to go to church. Whenever I listen to a preacher and make something which is more edifying, by somebody in Kotido cannot get it, I write it down. <coughs> when I watch TV and there is a more edifying statement, I quote it down. When I go to your house and I find something on the wall, Moral edifying, I quote it down. Whenever I listen to an advert, whenever I watch a movie, whenever I listen to a song, because in my first quotation, the number of quotations I have for artists in Uganda. Mm. So it's like uh, somebody will even tell you that maybe you just went to the internet and got something and you just put it together. I want to assure you, even if I gave you 10 million and I gave you this book and told you, recognize all the, fo the sources and write for me the websites which have all these quotations, you don't get them. Because yeah. I listen to TV, I read radio, I watch TV, I listen to preachers, adverts, I read papers, and anything which is morally edifying, I recognize it because I want to reach someone out there who, who doesn't have this information. Okay. Uh, no, there are a lot of people who watch TV, listen to radio, go to church, but, but they can't put together, you know, a, a, a writing, a collection a like this. What does it take to be a writer? Um, it takes a lot to be a writer. Um, for example, one... Um, when you look at the Bible, the Bible has all words that are in the Bible are in the dictionary. All words that are in the Bible are in the dictionary. These are dictionary words. But these people just sat together and came out with something which is morally edifying and can be able to reach to people. They, they were just organized letters, words which are in the dictionary to make something, use, something good. The same thing, that's, that I, that's the same thing which I did. I decided to, because people don't have time, to listen to some people don't have time to listen to the radio, TV, read the papers. I just got my time and I organized those small, small things that are in different sources so that I, I recognize them in one thing to make something which can create an impact on society. Okay. Um, what, what has been the, 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 the responses you've gotten from people? Uh, about your work. About the response has yes. been extremely very good. I was very excited when I was in just in year one. I went and I was invited in Abisunsa High School, Abisunsa Girls on a Careers Day. Mm. I was invited to, 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 ins uh, to inspire these young girls on how to write. Uh, I was supposed to present a presentation on uh, talent, um, how to spend your leisure in relation with writing. I was very humbled because just in year one, I was on a panel with professors from Makerere, with the Isaiah Katuma, with other great personalities in this country. To me, it was kind of an excitement. I was extremely very humbled to, ha to sit on a panel of professors because I was the most listen most lindy most least learned person just in year one at the university. Mm. And every artist I've managed to print a thousand books every year. Okay. A thousand artists how do you, every how do you do that? And what do you do with the books after printing them? When I print them, I take them to the bookshops. I take them to the bookshops and people buy them from the bookshops. I also do um, school presentations. I go to schools. I've traveled the, almost throughout the whole, this whole country. I've been invited in Seroma, Hilton High School, Maryland, Katikamu, Nabisunsa, very many schools in this country to, to inspire these people. So whenever I go to make a presentation in those schools, I also do sell. There are many people at the university who are kind of looking for jobs, no money for coursework, no money for what. Mm. Uh, but at least even with, um, each single day, each, at least a week, I can afford to get 10000 for a bookshop, which is selling my book. Okay. Uh, let's talk about that important aspect. Uh, aspect. Very many uh, of us young people who have uh, managed to achieve something in life, you have a platform that you can use to inspire people. Uh, we seem not to be playing our cards right. How can you turn your story, your life story, into a motivational story? How can you use it to reach out to other young people to actually transform their lives as well? Um, I'm writing a book called Living the Dream. Living the Dream is a book that uh, talks about my personal life from childhood up to where I've been able to beat the odds and get there. Um, me personally, kind of um, by P5, P6, I didn't know how to read English. I didn't even anything to write because I grew up in a traditional school, raw schools, where you don't have even any sh kind of shoe, no uniform. You can't, I started speaking something in English when I was just in P7, but just trying to gamble some, something small. This made the fact that I went to a school where we used to pay like 8,000 a <laughs> term as school fees. I managed to score eight. In my period, okay. though my English was just a little, just a little. And when I, when I, when I also joined, the, um, when I left the East and I joined the, w w Hilton High School in Mukono, I was just from a very humble school, but just in one week at the school, I became a general prefect. Uh -huh. When I left the Hilton High School and went to McCary University, my dream, uh, I had the ambition of becoming the guild president. Despite the fact I didn't become, I was a JRC School of Economics and a guild minister. 
for internship and employment under the Adika uh, Anna's regime. Uh -huh. So to, to me, I feel um, I need I have a lot in my heart which I need to to, to, to to tell people out there that despite the fact of your background, you can be able to beat your odds and get where you want to be. It's just a matter of believing in yourself and where you come from. Okay. and you always be there all right uh, there, there are very many uh, uh people out there with a similar story they are born in humble families families struggling financially families struggling to provide uh, how did you manage that situation you know you went to hilton uh that, that's a school that is uh, dominated by the affluent and then what what did you actually do to fit for example uh, when you came to makere probably they are very flamboyant young men people who have a lot of money at their disposal how can a young person fit in that kind of setting when you're from a very humble background uh, for example when i joined the hilton high school ah it was very extremely very interesting um the kind of classes of people i was studying with people are coming with the posh cars the kind of the, the, having whatever they needed uh, you know um and I, first of all i used to fear them personally I used to fear them despite the fact that i was yet perfect somehow my powers were a bit reduced because i knew these people come from good families and then to handle them in a, a, a fair kind of fair way mm. um but whenever we went to class and the teacher asks a question in the class i the p kids that came from smart uh, rich families were not putting up answers and surprisingly whenever to me the teacher would ask a question i would i, I would feel it this is obvious this is something simple to i can't give an answer so I, I discovered that there was a difference between me and some kids in my class that they were having the money but maybe probably they need to um have a kind of more information of what we are studying or what we are doing so that's how that's how i discovered myself that i'm kind of a bit unique rich but no answers when results come out the performance is still kind of a bit low humble how to contribute in class often and when our uh, results are out, I was there. In the first week, in fact, I was extremely very humbled. In the f my first time at Hilton High School, I made it in the top 10. Mm. I was extremely very humbled. Right. So th that's how I discovered myself. Okay. Let's see if we can pick the, the minds of our viewers. Quick one, the phone lines on your screen. You'll be able to call and share your thought with Huntington. It'll be it a question or comment. If you can call in the next few minutes, we'll be able to pick a few callers. And, and so, um, I in coming up with uh, the, f the famous quotations, what's your favorite? Uh, my favorite is um, a quotation in my first book called um, We Are Off. Uh, you, may not, you may not be written about encyclopedias, history books, or on the web. But people whose lives you touch by giving will always remember you for the good things you have done for them. That's the first quotation which I did in my first book. That's okay. my f and favorite what quotation. What inspired that? Um, it's because someone um, reached to me and gave me a scholarship to join Hilton High School. The head director of the school, he gave me a scholarship to join Hilton High School. So I felt I also needed to give back to society. We may not be written about in encyclopedias, history books, or on the web, but the people whose lives we touch by giving, we ne uh, they will always remember us for the good things we have done for them. Okay. Uh, uh, um, what, what, what kind of um, background does it, did, did you come from? Uh, you said by P5 you could hardly say a word in English. How, how did you turn that around? You know, that's the, that's the story of very many young people in the countryside uh, who are not privileged to go to the expensive private schools. How, how, how did you turn around that from the P5 boy who can hardly say two words in English to the person who can actually write thousands of words in English? Um, could you repeat your question? Uh, I, I mean your transformation from the boy who couldn't speak English uh, to being able to write. You, you mentioned that in P5 you would hardly uh, read the word in English. How did you turn around? Yes, that? I was very lucky that when um, in P5 I was taken to one of the Sia school where they don't allow another language in school apart from English. Mm. You'd speak Lugana, they give you a bond. So if you were not sure, they could give you <laughs> a dry pod. Okay. And even you could definitely those those were kind. Mm. It was extremely very hard for me to cope up because I didn't know anything in English. Uh, one instance which I, I'll never forget is when we were doing some kind of uh, uh, roundary work, cleaning the school, general cleaning on Friday. So the blackboard was extremely very dirty, and the suit was extremely very dirty. But where I grew up from, in New York schools, the schools, top schools, they use, they bring ex experts to clean the blackboard. Mm. But first, when we were doing the general cleaning, I found the blackboard is so dirty. But in my traditional school, we used to get banana and uh, um, um, potato leaves mix them with charcoal, we would smash them and uh, kind of clean the blackboard and the following day would come back when the blackboard is extremely very clean. Mm. So the same thing I did 
when I joined this good school. I decided to go to, I looked for tomato leaves, <laughs> I mixed with chaco, I had to mix with water so that I would make the clean, very kind of the blackboard, make it clean. So the, the sitting girl came and called the teacher and said, Look, Huntington is, is pointing out blackboard. It's merely some funny things which I don't understand. Because I didn't know English, there was no way to explain to the teacher that we can still have a finer blackboard if we mixed chaco and uh, tomato leaves and water than waiting for the other kind of expert to come and work on it. Definitely, the teacher stopped me and he, he came to me for spelling the blackboard. It's uh -huh. because I didn't know the English, how to express myself. I just kept quiet. <laughs> okay. <laughs> that must have been quite a hard experience. I just kept quiet. Uh, Huntington, uh, our time is really up. We, we need to get going. But what drives you? What, what motivates you? What, what's your motivating factor in life? Um, I always ask people, how much do you know of this world? Do you know of this world 100%, 100% or 99%? Uh, there's this, I always try to compare these two personalities. A professor, a, a younger man who has a degree from law, just 23, and he, um, an old man of six years who has never gone to school. Of these two people, who is more informed? Who knows the world more than the other? Six years, no education, has a family, and 23 years, single, a lawyer from Oxford. Of these people who knows the more of the world, does this young man know what it means to bring up a family of 70 members apart from the theory he has? Okay, let us try also to compare this, um, this old man who has never gone to school. Does he know that your body is, when your body is holy or partially mass, not expresses an up thrust? Does he know anything about exponentials, polynomials, moral concept? Of these two people, how much do you know of this? So there's this professor who prepared a talk for money and got to another island. So he tells the fisherman to clean the boat. They had to clean for the professor to use it to close. But as they were closing, the professor asked the fisherman, do you know anything in the chemistry? They said, no. Mathematics? They said, since childhood we have been fishing, do you know anything in the chemistry or mathematics? The professor told them, you deserve to die. The world is moving steadily, not anything in the chemistry or mathematics. But as they continued, waves and storms came their way. And they especially the boat is going to overturn. So they asked the professor, do you know how to swim? Especially the boat is going to overturn, do you know how to swim? The professor said, no. He knew the chemistry and the mathematics, but he didn't know how to swim. Okay. They knew how to swim, but they didn't know the chemistry and the mathematics. So I ask myself, how much do you know of this world? Allow me to quote from my book. We can only and only preview the past, understand the present, or predict the future through reading. The more books that you read today, the more you're going to be a better person tomorrow. For at the same today, we're going to be the same five years from now, except by two things. The type of books you read and the kind of people you associate with. Show me a family of readers and I'm going to show you the movers of the world. These people who read who can be able to move this world. Okay. All right. Uh, quite uh, moving statements there. And uh, uh, finally, I'll, I'll let you have your last word to everyone watching this morning before I let you go. Anything that you feel you should really not let go. Um, I, I, I just need to give you one quotation from this new book. I, it says... We are often let down by the most trusted person and loved by the least expected ones. Some make us cry for the things we haven't done, while others ignore all our faults just to see our smile. Some leave us while we need them most, and some stick around us when we ask them to leave. The world is a mixture of such kind of people. We just need to know which hand to shake and which hand to hold. Um, okay. This book can be found in all uh, bookshop, major bookshops in this country, even in our stock booklet at Garden City. You can find copies of this book. Uh, for, uh, for other things, you can also go to our Facebook page, Famous Quotation by Jags. You can also go to YouTube, type in Jagger and Huntington, have to have details of this book. And maybe for those who would love to have more interaction with me on my writings and uh, authorship, you can be able to contact me if I would, uh, you would allow me to give them my number. Yes, sir. 0704 0704 Six eight six eight six eight. Then we can be able to interact more on this book. Okay. Uh, thank you very much. Thank you, Huntington, for sparing time to be with us on the morning flavor this morning. And thank you, everyone, for watching. In case you have an inspiring story, we always prefer the youth voice. I'm not saying we lock out the elders, but in case you find an inspire, you have an ins uh, inspiring story that you think can change the lives of young people, kindly get in touch with us on WBS Morning Flavor. That's our Facebook page, or you can call our different our newsroom line or the production line that's always on your screen at the end of every bulletin get in touch with us we really want to motivate the young population out there to work hard and work smart for now we take a short break when we come back it's sports on the morning flavor don't go away